We need to also think about inflammation because inflammation really is at the root cause of all our chronic modern diseases, you know, from heart disease to type 2 diabetes to depression. And whether or not we're in a state of inflammation is very much in our own hands. So, you know, things that we can do for ourselves to reduce inflammation, apart from eating well, eating lots of vegetables, a little bit of fruit. You know, we always talk about fruit and veg. It's actually the veg that are really important. But fruit, so berries particularly, eating our apple every day, those are all things that can naturally help the body to reduce inflammation. Inflammation is our body's natural response to any kind of trauma. But we didn't know that our body views sitting down for long periods of time as a trauma. You know, it's like a danger signal because us human beings weren't designed to sit down for long periods of time. And in fact, one of our teachers in the psychoneuroimmunology lessons, well, the main professor, Leo Prumbun, we'd had a break in the course. We hadn't seen him for a few weeks. And he came and he said, my dear students, I'm so sorry. I must tell you, I had no idea. I'd been slowly killing you with this, you know, sedentary death syndrome. You've been sitting down for too long. And he made us get up literally every half an hour and do some press-ups or some push-ups or some star jumps, you know, which felt quite disruptive, but we all felt very energised by it. So that was a that was a really good thing to do. Coming back to causes of inflammation, one of the main things that's happened to our food supply in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, is that it's become very heavy in omega-6 fats and too light in the omega-3 fats. Part of the reason for that is that we used to eat meat us meat eaters from cows who ate grass. So they were high in omega-3. The meat was high in omega-3. Now we eat meat from cows that are fed on grains, which is omega-6. So getting the omega-6, omega-3 ratio is absolutely critical to address our inflammation levels. So how do we get more omega-3? Eat grass-fed meat. Most lamb, I think, is naturally grass-fed because you can't mess about with sheep too much. They don't do well unless they're out eating grass. But think about also about chickens and eggs, you know, free-range organic, because if they're not free-range and they're not organic, they'll definitely be eating poor-quality omega-6 grains. If they're free-range and organic, we've got to hope that they are pecking about eating things that chickens are supposed to eat, which, I know it sounds gross, but, you know, slugs and worms and things like that. Eat more fish. Eat more seafood. And if you hate fish and you hate seafood, because I have seen people who just wouldn't touch fish, just take omega-3, you know, supplements. And if you're vegan, you can still take omega-3, but you need to take omega-3 supplements from algae. That's fine. It's not quite as good as fish but it's still going to be really, really good for you. And it's good for our brain, you know, as well as, you know, inflammation. One of, there's a brilliant paper called Cytokine Sing the Blues, which I think came out in about 2004. And it was a link between inflammation, which we know is lack of omega-3, too much omega-6, too much sitting about, the diet, and depression. Because when we're in a state of inflammation, create all these hormone cytokines that are associated with depression. So it's really, really important.